Mike, I look forward to working with you when you're in the State House and I'm back in Congress. So, uh, and I want to thank the uh, Cincinnati Tea Party and the 912 Project uh, for inviting me to speak here today on one of the more important issues that our nation has faced in this, and that is health care reform. And I want to thank you all for trying to stop the train wreck that's going on in Washington right now. You know, a week or so ago, the attention of a nation was focused on a, on a six-year-old boy who was thought to be in a runaway flying saucer-like weather balloon. It was kind of like one of President Obama's campaign promises. You know, you know, lofty and shiny at first, but found to be nothing but hot air and empty after crashing to the ground. Now, President Obama promised us that he would fundamentally transform the country. And if you look at what's going on, and he wasn't kidding. I know we don't want it. We've seen the President and the Pelosi-led Congress try to enact far-reaching measures that threaten the future of every one of you here and your kids and your grandkids. We've seen them pass cap-and-trade or cap-and-tax legislation in the House. We've seen them pass an enormous budget that's put us 1.4 trillion, yes, trillion dollars more into debt. And now they're threatening a government takeover, as Mike mentioned, of one sixteenth of our economy. That's the nation's health care system. They promise change under the guise of health care reform, which might sound reasonable enough. Most Americans would like to see steps taken to reduce health care insurance costs and further improve the quality of care, but that's not what the plans coming out of Washington will really do. Instead, Washington politicians and their special interest friends threaten to increase health care insurance costs, increase the deficit, and increase the federal government's control over your medical health care decisions. And that's one reason why the Tea Party movement is so important. You are helping to educate your fellow Amer Americans, the fellow American people, about the truth, about what's actually taking place in Washington. For that, I applaud and thank you, and I encourage you to remain vigilant in your efforts. Your efforts are particularly valuable on an issue like health care, because the Washington the Washington politicians have really tried to keep the public in the dark about what's going on. After all, their plan was to pass their health care power grab before Congress's August recess and before anyone, even members of Congress, had a chance to read the bill. But then, you came along. Of course, the Washington establishment and their allies in the mainstream press said that you were just the fox-watching political fringe, a temporary bump in the road. Well, they know better now. Those who support, those who support the big government health care takeover, or Obamacare, or Pelosi care, whatever you want to call it, say that conservatives, or Republicans, or Tea Partiers, or 9 twelvers or whatever, whatever you want to call us, have no ideas, no solutions, no positive plans for reforming health care. That's just not true. We do support reforms that would increase choice and provide American families greater access to affordable quality health care options. For example, we support providing business owners with better opportunities to provide coverage to their employees by allowing association health plans which would permit small and medium-sized businesses to band together to purchase health insurance and ultimately result in lower rates to purchase coverage for their employees. That's a common sense reform. We should also allow individuals and businesses to purchase health insurance across state lines, which would provide more choices and cheaper rates for people. During my time in Congress, I sponsored legislation that would allow every American to fully deduct the cost of their health insurance premiums, just like the tax deduction currently most employers get. You ought to get that too. 
That would give American families who are not covered by their employers a real opportunity to purchase their own coverage if they need to do that or if they choose to do that. Most conservatives support portability, allowing people to take their health care coverage from job to job. We also believe action should be taken to help people with pre-existing conditions to keep their health insurance coverage. And most importantly, we support medical malpractice or tort reform. Yeah. to control the frivolous lawsuits which result in doctors often ordering expensive, unnecessary tests which drive up costs that ultimately get passed upon to you, the consumer. Even though this may be the most effective manner in which to control health care costs, you won't likely see that reform in any legislation coming out of this Congress because far too many who are in power in Washington right now are beholden to liberal special interest groups, especially the trial lawyers. Yes. It's unfortunate that Steve Driehaus chose not to show up today to listen to your concerns and finally tell us where he stands on the important health care issue. Although he's been particularly cagey in letting his constituents, you, know where he stands, he did find time to let Howard Dean know that he supports the so-called public option plan. That was just announced this week. That's right. Steve Driehaus should put the interest of his constituents, you, ahead of party bosses, ahead of Washington special interest groups, and ahead of Howard Dean. We can only hope that he will ultimately make the right choice and be supportive of measures that would actually improve the quality and affordability of health care rather than support a government takeover of our health care system. But don't hold your breath. He voted wrong on the so-called economic stimulus package. He voted wrong on Obama's budget and he voted wrong on cap and tax. You know, with the way things are going in Washington right now, it's easy to get discouraged. Many Americans are. But more and more people are rising up as evidenced here today and are determined to take our country back. Thank you, thank each and every one of you for being the vanguard in the movement to once again have America be, in the words of Ronald Reagan, that shining city on the hill again. That's what we need to get back to. And all over America, this movement that you all know about because you're here today and you feel it and you breathe it and you believe in it, it's happening all over this country. And we will take this country back. The left-wing agenda that's been in place now for almost a year now, they can do a lot of damage. Some of this stuff's going to be hard to reverse. Ronald Reagan once said, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program. And if we conservatives do take the Congress back next year, and I think there's a darn good chance that we will, we're going to have, we're going to have a lot of work to do. <laughs> and when Republicans had control of the House, some good things happened, but not nearly enough. And unfortunately, a lot of our guys became a lot like their guys do, and that was a problem. Hopefully, and I believe, that they learned their lesson, the, the ones who really did vote a lot more like the liberals. And the spending got out of control, and that can't happen again. But the country is going to turn, because people are rejecting this agenda, this left-wing agenda that we've seen more and more of, and it's not Republicans, it's not politicians that are going to make the difference. It's the people that are here today, and it's you and your families, because you know how to spend your money and what's better for you than a larger and larger federal government. And that's why I'm confident that we will take this country back, and we'll do it right, and it'll be with you. So God bless each and every one of you. God bless your families. God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you.